Hello everybody, my name is Milo and I'm from the Fellowship of Acoustics and today is a very special day for us because as you can see I have some beautiful guitars around me and not just any beautiful guitars but vintage beautiful guitars. They are all D28s and they are all from the period of 1937 to 1947. And why is that so special? Because the D28s are one of the most sought after acoustic vintage guitars. And most people say that the guitars from the pre-war and the war period uh, are the best ones around. Um, so having five of them, excluding this uh, last one, but I'll tell you about that later. Having five of them in one room uh, here in the Netherlands in Dedensvaart is, is quite special. And for this special occasion, we really wanted to celebrate. And uh, because of that, we asked Bertolf Lentink uh, from the Netherlands, a great singer-songwriter and guitarist, to join us to provide some demos of these guitars because he can really do them justice. Bertolf is really one of our finest artists here in the Netherlands. And besides being a great recording artist and singer-songwriter, he also really excels at the acoustic steel string guitar. I think he's one of the masters in the Netherlands. Before I get into the nitty gritty, we'll start with some history, some even more ancient history than these five guitars. Because the D28 was first released in 1931 and it took the market by storm because it provided a new, rich, loud and full-bodied acoustic uh, guitar sound. And that's what people needed for their music at the time. So if you were one of the lucky ones to buy a D28 in 1931, it probably would have looked something like this. So it would be a 12 fret. D28 with the slotted headstock. Um, this is not an actual 1931 D28. This is an authentic uh, series by Martin. So uh, a D28 from 1931 would have looked like this guitar over here. So what makes this comparison even more interesting is that during these years from 1937 to 1947, Martin changed their uh, specifications a lot of the D28. And after this period, a lot stayed the same. So um, we're going to dive in the specifics and we're going to start with the old lady in this party and that's the 1937. So as you all know, probably the D28 is an acoustic uh, dreadnought with rosewood back and sides and a spruce top. And uh, all of these guitars are no exception, of course. In the early days, Martin used the Brazilian rosewood. And that is one of the unique features that makes uh, these guitars so valuable. So we have a Brazilian rosewood back and sides, and then the top is Adirondack red spruce. So um, you can see Adirondack spruce on some of these and Sitka spruce on some of these. Uh, the Adirondack has uh, a little bit more volume, and it has some more dynamics, and the Adirondack spruce also adds some headroom to the whole guitar. So when you're a fierce picker and you want to play heavily, uh, the Adirondack can uh, support you. <laughs> Also looking at an ebony fretboard, uh, we have the diamond inlay, um, and this one has forward shifted scalloped bracing. So the bracing pattern on these guitars is one of the things that, that they changed a lot. Forward shifted bracing means that the X bracing is moved a little bit closer towards the sound hole, and the scalloped part means that they took some wood out of the braces, making them scalloped. What this offers to the guitar is uh, there's a little bit less tension on the top, which allows it to move more freely. And then uh, you will get some more bass response uh, and you will get a little bit more volume.
This beautiful 37D28 also has the herringbone trim. That's also what makes these guitars uh, very special. And what makes this one unique compared to the rest is that it has a, a wider nut width. Um, so this is one and three quarters or uh, 44 and a half millimeters. The records are a bit unclear about this, but after using the one and three quarters uh, nut width, Martin changed to one and 11 16th or 43 millimeters uh, somewhere in 1938 or to mid uh, 1939. So after that, they used the one and 11 16th till about 2000. Eight, if I'm correct, uh, and then change back to the one and three quarters. So having one that has the wider nut width is quite special. Let's jump in our time machine and we move ahead two years and we get to this amazing 1939 D28. So this is really the epitome of what we think of as a pre-war uh, D28. So the, the 37 and the 39 are quite similar in cosmetics as well as specs, but there are a few differences. So um, of course, again, Brazilian rosewood back and sides with the Adirondack red spruce top uh, we have the ebony fingerboard we have the diamond inlays like i mentioned uh, this one sports a slightly smaller nut width so the one and 11 16th so that's one difference uh, another one is that this one doesn't have the forward shifted scallop braces but this one has the rear shifted scallop bracing so what that means is that they shifted the, the x bracing a little bit further towards the bridge so what that offers is a little bit more clarity in tone, a little bit more focus, and it should offer some more projection as well. that Martin opted for a rear shifted scallop bracing um, is that the forward shifted allowed the top to move so freely um, that with heavier strings uh, there was a chance that you would get a belly on the guitar so that the bridge would move up and you don't want that so and see, seeing that during this time uh, more players were uh, choosing slightly thicker strings uh, Martin tried to keep up with the customer demand and uh, moved the X bracing a little bit backwards to the rear shifted bracing. <laughs> so now we're moving to 1942 and we're in the midst of the Second World War, of course. The Second World War meant that uh, Martin Guitar Company and other guitar companies had some difficulty sourcing steel for their guitars because most of the, most of the steel was used uh, to support the war. So we have this 1942 D28 and what instantly makes this uh, special is that it doesn't have steel in the neck. So instead of a steel T-bar in the neck, uh, this one sports an ebony strip to support the neck and keep it straight. What's also noticeable about the, the neck on this one is that it's quite slim. Uh, the other two have quite a, a, a big uh, neck. This one is quite, uh, quite a slim neck and quite a thin profile. <laughs> of specs this one is quite similar uh, to the 39 so it ha also has the rear shifted scallop bracing of course it has the Adirondack red spruce and the Brazilian rosewood back and sides it has the ebony fretboard the diamond inlays as well and as you can see this uh, D28 from 42 is in remarkable condition the top hasn't aged as much as the uh, as the other guitars in here 
and seeing uh, an, an old Martin um, in this condition right now is quite special. So right now we're just past the halfway point and I wanted to mention that these guitars are not for sale unfortunately. They come from a private collection and we're really grateful that we got the opportunity to showcase them to you all. And our next stop in the time machine is in 1945 and right now we're going to see some changes right off the bat. Um, I hope you will notice it as well but you can see that this one has dots instead of the diamond inlays. One thing you can also notice is that this D28 has plastic tuners and it's little details like this that uh, sets these guitars apart. <laughs> still looking at a Brazilian rosewood and Adirondack red spruce uh, top but one thing that's different is that Martin changed to the standard X bracing so we're, we've talked about the forward shifted and the rear shifted the standard is in between and the braces aren't scalloped but they are tapered so uh, if you see a brace like this uh, a scallop would look like this and a taper starts at the high point and moves to a lower point. And of course, this one also has the, the ebony uh, fingerboard. And uh, I hope you're also enjoying the playing of Bertolf uh, in the meantime of all these guitars. Uh, if you want to check out some of his music, one of the tunes he's playing, the fingerstyle tune, is called Mary. It's a really, really wonderful song. Uh, it's uh, available to find everywhere online on Spotify and Apple Music, of course. So search for uh, Bertolf and uh, you'll find his music. <laughs> Right now for our last stop, we left the Second World War behind us and we're in 1947 and we've got this beautiful D28. And compared to the other four, this one from 1947 has the most changes to its specifications. And the changes we see in this one is that it doesn't have a Adirondack top, it has a Sitka spruce top. It still has the Brazilian rosewood back and sides, of course. Uh, next to the uh, Sitka spruce top, we also uh, we left the uh, herringbone binding behind as well. So right now we have a, a cream uh, plastics called Bolteron uh, uh, binding. And that's what we see from uh, D28s from this year onwards. Also, this guitar doesn't have an ebony fingerboard anymore. This one has uh, a fingerboard of Brazilian rosewood as well. In terms of the bracing, this one has the standard bracing, the standard X bracing that the 45 has, but right now the braces aren't tapered and they aren't scalloped. So that makes the top of this guitar a little bit stiffer and it gives the guitar a really nice characteristic of its own. And as you can hear in the, in the demo, uh, this one has been played in wonderfully. So uh, it sounds really open and uh, uh, has a really nice mid-range as well. <laughs> As I've told you before, the other four guitars had the ebony uh, fingerboard and this one sports a Brazilian rosewood uh, fingerboard, which is really nice. And uh, next to that, uh, in terms of the bracing, this one has the standard X bracing of the 45 as well. But where the 45 was tapered, uh, this one wasn't tapered and it wasn't scalloped. So it's quite a bit of wood um, that was used for the braces. Um, it makes the top a little bit stiffer, but when a guitar has been played in like this one, uh, it will sound wonderful nonetheless.
So I want to thank you for, for joining me on this wonderful day and uh, listening to me talk about these uh, D28s and also listening to them. Um, please let us know which of the five sounds the best to your ears uh, because that's really personal. And once again, I want to thank Bertel for coming over and playing these wonderful guitars. Um, if you have any questions about these guitars, feel free to hit us up on email or in the comments or uh, wherever you like and uh, we're open to answer your questions. For now, uh, that's all. So thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.